Right, so welcome to lesson number two on whole numbers in uh, grade nine. And in the previous lesson, we said that any rational number, right, a number that either ends or repeats, can be written as a ratio of two whole numbers, right? Well, let's in fact see how to do that. So let's let's look at some examples if the number terminates. So for example, if we've got 0, 0,375, if we let that be x, right, then we're going to multiply by a thousand. And the reason a thousand is we're going to make that into a whole number. All right. And then remember an equation, it's just like a set of balances. We can do the same thing to both sides. So X is actually exactly the same as 375 over a thousand. Right. Let's do another one. If we had 2,87, well, let's call that Y. We can call it anything we like, but let's just call it some variable. Then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by 100. 100 is the smallest number of places we need to move the decimal point to get a whole number on that side. And then we get, dividing both sides by 100, we get y is 287 over 100. Type that into a calculator, you'll see it's exactly the same as 2,87. What we've done is with these numbers that end, we have managed to show that they can be written as a ratio, a fraction of two whole numbers. They may be able to be simplified, but we actually have already, already achieved our goal, so I should say goal, of um, uh, getting a ratio of two whole numbers. Now let's look at some that don't, uh, that don't terminate, but which repeat. So for example here, we've got x is 0, 0,5555 forever, carrying on forever. All right, if we now take this number and we multiply it by 10, Right, so we've called it x. On the left-hand side, we now have 10x. On the right-hand side, we have 5,555 carrying on forever. We can subtract these two numbers. Right? If we go the top one, sorry, the bottom one minus the top one. On the left-hand side, we get 9x. On the right-hand side, we actually get 5. Because this one goes 5, 5,5 repeating forever. And this one goes 0, 0,5 repeating forever. So all those fives which repeat forever, just subtracting us, five. And lastly, x will be five divided by nine. Right, and we can check that on a calculator. If you divide five by nine, you'll see that you get an irrational number that never ends, but it does repeat. And we've written it as a ratio of two numbers. Right, let's look at one like this, which actually repeats with two repeating digits. In other words, 393939 nine, 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 carrying on forever. We let it be x. Because they're two repeating digits, we multiply by 100. All right? And so what we've got now, after, after the decimal comma, both of these numbers are exactly the same. We've got 2,3939339, and we've got 239,393939. If we subtract the top one from the bottom one, in other words, we go bottom minus top, right? We're going to get 99x is 237. So x is 237 over 99. If you divide 237 over 99, you will get 2,393939. So what we've done, we've written this number, which is a rational number. Although it never ends, it does repeat. We've written it as a ratio of two whole numbers. Let's try these ones. All right, so 3,572, this one actually ends. Let's let that be P, All right? We're going to multiply it to make a whole number. We're going to need to multiply by 1,000 on the right-hand side. So that gives us 3,572, and that will be 1,000 lots of P. And lastly, we're going to divide both sides by 1,000 will in fact be 3572 over a thousand. And there we have two whole numbers that divide to give us that number. We've expressed it as a ratio of two whole numbers. This next one repeats with repeating decimals of out of three groups. So what we're going to need to do is suppose we call this G, we're going to need to multiply it by a thousand. If we multiply it by a thousand, 1,000 G will be 2,345, comma, 345, 345, carrying on like that forever. Okay, and now when I subtract these two things, 
everything after the decimal comma is exactly the same on both, even though they both carry on forever, right? And so what I get is I get 999G is equal to 2345, three, three, four, three, right? Because when I subtract uh, that 2 from the 2345, I get 2343. Three. And then lastly, B will just be 2343. Three over 999 right and again you can check on your calculator that if you divide 2343 by 999 you've got 2 comma 345 345 and we have written it as a ratio of two whole numbers the next one actually ends right suppose this was k let's go for k equals 1 comma 687 so 1000 k that's how many times i would what i need to multiply by to get a whole number over here one six eight seven. So in fact, K will be one six eight seven over one thousand. We have taken this rational number and written it as a ratio of two whole numbers. Right. The next one repeats with two decimal places. Let's call it R. So in fact, a hundred R would actually equal sixty eight comma six eight six eight, carrying on forever. Right. Now, if I subtract and I take the top row minus the bottom row, sorry, the bottom row minus the top row, I'm going to get 99R, 68. And I'm going to divide both sides by 99, and I get 68 over 99. And you'll see that that is, in fact, exactly the same as 0, 686868, carrying on forever. Don't be misled by your calculator, maybe expressing it as 6868 with a 69 at the end or a 7 at the end. What it's doing is it can't display all the numbers and it's just rounding up that last digit. All right, 1,555, this one carries on forever. Let's call that P, all right? So let's multiply by 10 because we've just got one repeating decimal. All right, now what we've got, and that's where we want to be, the stuff after the decimal points in both of these is exactly the same. They carry on forever, but they are both exactly the same. Now, if we subtract, and we're going to go the top row minus the bottom row, sorry, the bottom row minus the top row, I keep getting that wrong, 9P equals 14. So in fact, P is 14 over 9. We've written this repeating decimal as a ratio of two whole numbers. And then the last one, this one actually doesn't uh, repeat, it actually terminates. So let's call this one H. If H is that, we're going to need to multiply, in fact, by 100,000 to get a whole number here on the right-hand side. So 100,000 H is actually the same as 45, right? So in fact, H is actually 45 over 100,000. And simplify, right? However, what we are interested in is we've managed to write this as a ratio of two whole numbers. We're going to just play around with some, some sort of ideas. Firstly, the idea of estimation. Estimation is a really valuable skill. This number, 199, is actually quite close to 200, and this number is quite close to 20. So we would imagine that their product would be quite close to 4,000. Okay, let's work out the product, and we're going to use long multiplication, which we were taught kind of previously, 199 by 21. What we do is we multiply the 1 by this number, right? And when we do that, we get 199. Then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this number by 20, right? But in fact, what we're going to do, we're going to put a 0 there. That's, that's moving everything along. So we're multiplying by 10, effectively, by putting that 0 there. Now we're going to take the 199 and we're going to multiply it by 2. When we multiply 2 by 9, we get 18. Then we carry 1 and we multiply this 9 by 2 as well, and we get another 18 plus the 1 that we carried is 19. We're still carrying 1, and we multiply the 2 by the 1, and we get 2 plus 1, we get 3, 9, 8, 0. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add these two things together, and we get 4, 1, 7, 9. That's our, our long multiplication thing, right? Let's just take a little bit of time to understand why, in fact, it works. When we multiply 199 by 21, we're actually multiplying it by 20 plus 1, like that, all right? That 199 needs to distribute and multiply into that bracket. So we need to get 199 lots of 20. And then we need to get 
199 lots of 1. And we need to add those two things together. And if we look in our long, uh, our, um, in our sort of table here, in our long multiplication, this piece here is the 3980. And this piece is 199. And then we add them and we get the 4179. Hopefully, we are seeing why the long multiplication thing works. This stuff over here is actually written there, right? It's actually 199 multiplied by 2, but we put a 0 on the end because we're actually wanting to multiply it by 20. This piece over here, right, is actually this piece over here, right? And then we add them together to get our final answer. Okay, let, I'm going to show you another way of working out 199 times 21, all right? 199 lots of 21 is actually 200 lots of 21 minus 1 lot of 21. So we could write it like this. We could write it as 200 times 21 minus 21. We could then regroup that 200 times 21 into 2 times 100 times 21. We could regroup it again into 2 times 21 times 100. Remember, the order in which we multiply numbers does not matter, nor does the way we associate or group them. 2 times 21 is easy. It's just 42. 42 lots of 100 is easy. It's just 4,200. And now let's take away 21 and we get 4179, which is exactly what we got before, but maybe an easier way of doing it. Let's practice that. Let's use this trick to calculate the following. 99 lots of 57. Well, in fact, if I wanted to work out 99 lots of 57, that's actually going to be close to 100 lots of 57, and I just need to take off one lot of 57, right? This is quite straightforward. This is just 5,700 minus 57, right? And I get 5,643, 5,643. Much, much easier than doing the long multiplication. 101 times 43. Well, that's just 100 lots of 43 plus one more lot of 43. All right, 100 lots of 43 is the same as 43 lots of 100. It's 4,300 plus 43. And lo and behold, 43, 43. All right, we really want you to become comfortable with numbers. 999 is very close to 1,000, so let's get 1,000 lots of 67. That'll be very easy to work out. And then just take away one lot of 67. And what do we get? We get 67,000. When we take away 67, we get 66,933. Okay, let's look at 50 times 99. Well, what about 100 lots of 90, 100 lots of 50? We only want 99 lots of 50, so we must take away one lot of 50. 50 times 100 is easy, it's 5,000. Take away 50, and we end up with, not surprisingly, 4,950. Okay, 27 lots of 101. 100 lots of 27. Add one more lot of 27. And what we get is we get 2700, 0, 0, 2700, plus 27. And lastly, we get 2727. And then the very last one, 48 times 1,001. Well, that's going to be quite straightforward, isn't it? It's just going to be 48, 1,000 lots of 48. 48 lots of 1,000, all right? 1,000 lots of 48. And then we need one more lot of 48 to get 1,001. All right, this is just 48,000. And this is plus 48. And we get 480. 48,048. 48, okay. Right. We've left some space here for your teacher to make up some extra examples. And now we're going to look at how shopkeepers manage to do subtraction. They don't actually do subtraction at all. They just use some addition. Suppose you buy something for, say, 13 Rand 68, and you pay with a 20 Rand note. Now, the shopkeeper doesn't actually work out your change by doing the subtraction. What he or she does is he just adds back, right, to, from 13 rand 68, we're going to need two cents, and that will take us up to 13 rand 70. Then we'll need another 30 cents to make it up to 
14 rand, and then we'll need another 6 rand. So the total change is actually 6 rand 32. Let's do some subtraction by, in fact, working out what we would need to add back. It's actually much easier, right? We would need to add 3 to get this up to 300, and then we'd need to add another 200 to get it from 300 to 500. So the answer, 203. Here, we would need to add 13 to get to 300. And then we would also need to add another 50 to get from 300 to 350, giving us a final answer of 63. Here, we would need to add 25 to get to 400. 25, sorry. Let's just write that better. 25 to get to 400. And then we'd need another 80. So, in fact, the answer here is 105. And the last one, here we would need 3 to get to 40, 60 to get to 200, and another 50 to get up to 250. So it's actually 63 plus 50, it's 113. Right, and there's some space for your teacher to make up some extra examples of those. Okay. And I think that brings us to the end of our lesson.